Welcome to Just Cook It Radio, where delicious recipes and real cooking lead to amazing dishes. We cook, you listen, it works. With your hosts, Chef Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. You are listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV, Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pereca. We're back in the WMBS studios today. I'm here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley. And gentlemen? Yeah, after our whirlwind tour last week. <laughs> to the Big Jeez. Barn. We were at the Big Barn last <laughs> week in Periopolis, and I must say, I had a fantastic time. It was very nice. I had a good time. Yeah, it was and great. And good to... food, which makes it all that much better. Absolutely. Great. Can't beat great food and great people. And uh, it was right before Christmas. Mm-hmm. So, gentlemen, how was your Christmas? Oh, very nice. Oh, I had a great nice. Christmas. It was enjoyable. Yeah, in you were Arizona. in Arizona at a bar. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> hey, where else would I be, right? <laughs> Nothing like Christmas at the bar, huh? Yes. Oh, man. Uh, actually, yeah. it was a brewery, excuse me. A brewery. Well, that may, that classes it up a bit, yeah, I yeah. have to say. <laughs> Drinking it out of the tap. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't pool sharking or anything. He no. was actually at the brewery. He had to go straight to the source. That's yeah, how exactly, important it was. Exactly. But um, exactly. I had a great Christmas, too. I did a lot of cooking, as you could see. I was, was going to say, it would be odd if you didn't. Yes. I made a, a prime rib on Which Christmas. looked wonderful. Yeah, so we used the same recipe, but I had a nice 16-pound prime really? bone-in prime rib that was really, really good. I made some uh, creamy cauliflower with smoked cheddar cheese. Um, I made some cranberry vanilla bean roasted root vegetables, that which came good. out good. And I did a salad with uh, grilled artichoke hearts, olives, and I made a uh, tomato, uh, an oven-roasted tomato vinaigrette. Oh, sounds good. So, yeah, it was a great meal. And, and we also okay. had a ham that my aunt brought from the big, big barn, barn. Mm-hmm, which was delicious as usual. That ham, that, and unfortunately we didn't get to talk about it on the air last week, that ham that was made last week was amazing. And, I mean, it was very, very good. It was the Amish uh, smoked ham from the big barn that you prepared. Actually, yes. I should say your dad did all the work he on He did the work, on, but he used my recipe. Oh, yeah, so. uh, he did the <laughs> Somebody had labor. to base the ham while I, I was out schmoo- I schmoozing with everyone. With the public. Yeah, and cooking out there. But uh, we did some kibasi dishes. And all those recipes for my ham and the kibasi can be found on our website at justcookit.net, along with the recipe we're preparing today, Bill. Yep. And today is all about New Year's. New Year's. So we're going to talk about New Year's. We're going to prepare a dish. That, uh, that is good luck for New Year's because there's lots of foods, and we'll talk about them today later in the program as well. Foods that are good luck to eat on New Year's and foods there are a few, believe it or not, that are bad luck oh, really? that you want to I avoid on New Year's. So we'll talk about that. Um, so what we're going to make today, and you can get the recipe at justcookit.net. It is posted right now. We are going to make a sausage and lent- a, a spicy sausage and lentil soup with escarole. So uh, I have right now, we have our pot on, and I'm going to start with some butter that I put in the pan. And while I get this going, we had a, uh, a special delivery at yeah. waiting for us at the station this morning. We Why don't got, you fill us in? We got a, I guess we can call it a Christmas gift, um, from Marty and Donna in Swickley. And it's from the uh, uh, popcorn place called Popcorn and That. And I know actually right where it's located. Is it and that or and that? And that. Okay. And that. So it's the Pittsburgh East. And that. Popcorn in that. And that. Okay, gotcha. Um, but it is located in Wexford and also in Ambridge. And I know where the one is in on Wexford. It's on 19. And the reason I know where it's at is there's a classic VW bug sitting in the parking lot next to it. Mm. And, you wouldn't uh, know that. And the other thing. That, That's yeah. right up your alley. And another thing is, too, is that, um, and I just realized this, very good friends of my, uh, my father um, live very close to that location because it's by North Allegheny High School. Excuse my noise. So I, I'm up. familiar with the location very well. Cool. But uh, we'd to like, try to, it. like to thank Marty and Donna for this because um, he listens to the program up there. He He's um, on the road on the weekends, and when he's there, he's able to listen to us, and it's really nice to be able to do that. So Donna and Marty, thank you very much uh, for the yes, popcorn. Thank we you. greatly appreciate it, and we'll try it before the end of the show today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that, and it's in a really beautiful tin. Snowflakes. Yeah, Snowflakes. it's nice. It's very festive, very holiday, yeah. and I love good popcorn. Yes, I so, do, too. So what we have in this pan... And that's the one thing I did not get so far this holiday season was good popcorn. Well, now we got it. There we go. So we'll try it here in a few minutes, and again, thank you, Marty and Don. It's very much appreciated. So, Bill, in this pan, I, as you saw, I had some butter. It's melted, and I'm going to add, I have some carrots, onions, celery, and a bay leaf. A bay leaf. Okay. Yep, we're going to add that right to our pan with our butter. And we have it on about medium-low heat, 
Okay. okay. So we're just going to sweat this. We don't want it. We don't want any color on it. We don't want to really saute it or cook so it. So you're trying that, to make them that hard. Let's see if I get it right. Translucent. Translucent is correct. That's what the onion will be once there it's sweated. Go. And I also have some. I've been garlic. paying attention over the weeks. Can you tell? <laughs> He's learning. <laughs> it's a very educational program. There you go. I have a, a, about a, t a teaspoon of minced garlic that I'm going to add to this mix as well. And we're just going to sweat all this together here. And that's our first step. So while that cooks, I want to talk a little bit about. New Year's. Okay. So that's what we said the show is about today. And um, basically, we talked a bit before we went on air about New Year's resolutions, and you're not a fan. I. And the thing of it is, a lot of people don't follow through with their resolutions. Because I break them a week after I have them, exactly. or within hours of having them. So. Well, for everyone listening to the program, uh, this is what I'm going to do for the New Year's. Yeah. And Bill, I invite you to follow suit. Sure. Mike as well. Um, I'm going to proclaim, for me anyway, 2014 as the year of Twitter. So <laughs> I'm going to move. I did, that in two, I did that in 2006. Yes. So. Well, it's a come full circle. Now, I'm going to move a little away. I'm, we're still going to have our Facebook pages. You we're still going to be on Google+. Plus, but I'm going to move more towards Twitter and focus all of my social media efforts on Twitter. So, And, and what is this drastic change due to? I'm just trying to mix it up, do something okay. different. I, I realized that, you know, there was a while about probably a year and a half ago that I focused on Twitter, and it was a lot of fun. Right. But for whatever reason, I kind of moved, maybe it was life, maybe it was, I, who knows, kind of moved away from it a little bit, and I was using more Facebook, Google+, Plus, um, all that stuff. So now I'm de I've decided for at least one year okay. I want to focus my social media efforts on Twitter and see uh, how that grows and, and it, what it happens from it. 2006, right when Twitter was founded, a caller into my online program said, Bill, you need to try this. And I went to the young lady, who everybody knows her now as the YouTube phenom, and also she's on Spike TV, she's on MTV, and everything else is I, Justine, uh -huh. or Justine Xeric, who's from Scenery Hill, PA, goes, Bill, you need to try this. And I go, but why? So I had a 23-year-old trying to move me into Technology and I loved Twitter for about two, two and a half years, and then got away from it. Uh -huh. But um, I'll, I'll, I'll take your challenge, and I will uh, move back into the Twitter sphere again. Awesome, Mike. Are you on Twitter? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, do you, you tweet? I uh, yeah, see. You know, I used to tweet more when I worked out at ASU, but now I don't. Have a, that's not as interesting a life anymore for me. So <laughs> it's just yeah. But you can make it up, and no yes. one would know. That's possible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so for the past couple of days, I start. I start a little early. Okay. So I've been tweeting more the past couple of days, and I've picked up almost fifteen followers. Oh really? I've picked up quite days. a few followers so, too. Yeah. So I want. I'm not even tweeting now. Let's throw out our, our Twitter handles can be found at our website at justcookit.net, but they're really easy. <laughs> Mine is at Mario. Pareka and yours is at Bill Alexander. Yeah, there you go. How hard so, <laughs> there's no weird numbers. <laughs> What's yours, Mike? At Mike Sack. There you, there you go. go. So Very easy. Find us all on Twitter. We're going to post more there. I mean, again, our stuff, if you're on Facebook and all that stuff, you, our stuff will still post there, but we'll have more exclusive insider. It's more more of a personal thing, Twitter, I find. 140 than the characters. Other so, yeah, but it's more personal because you, you post more personal messages other than just, here's a link to what I'm doing. Well, exactly, exactly. So that's why I want to get more, a little more personal, get to know the listening audience, hopefully they'll join everyone listening will join in on that we get to know each other have some conversation and uh really evolve the show into something that's a lot more fun yeah. so 2014 here at just cook it radio is the year of the twitter the year of the twitter so <laughs> log on to twitter.com get your if you're not if you're not on there sign up it's free follow us at mario pareca bill alexander and mike sackley so we have our carrots onions celery garlic uh bay leaf butter and it's starting to uh, to sweat in the pan there, and um, Bill, some. Wait, uh, I'm tweeting a picture of Mike. <laughs> oh, good. We've 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 just oh we've begun already. There he goes. This is so. fantastic. And you can actually see a picture of this dish that we're preparing here in studio on my tw on my Twitter page. So what, I posted it uh, last and night. And the hashtag will be just cook it. How's that? There you go. So. As we as we move forward in the show, as I said, <laughs> as if, I you, if you go to justcookit.net, uh, there's a blog post that I posted yesterday all about New Year's foods. It's about the lucky foods, the unlucky foods, and all that stuff. And the reason I prepared this dish, and I chose this dish to do for New Year's, is because it, this dish contains three of the five lucky food groups. Okay. Okay. Um, there's, five, the f there's five lucky food groups that people recognize. Okay. There's pork. Right. Uh, sea fish. Um, legumes, legumes, grapes, okay, and cakes. 
Okay. okay. So those are the five. And lentils, which we have here, fall into the legume category. Right. The pork, obviously the sausage, falls into the pork category. Right. And the escarole that we're going to add falls into the greens category. Okay. So we cover three bases here. Now, they all have different meanings. They all have different um, reasons for being lucky, and we can talk about that. So uh, we'll get into that. But some foods you should avoid right off the bat, and you'll see how this recipe kind of goes with that as well. Lobster. It's oh, not good lobster. for New Year's. You can eat it all through the year. Don't lobster. eat it on New Year's. Why? Because lobster. Here, I'll tell you can the exact I eat it? reason. Can I eat it New Year's Eve? I wouldn't. I would <sighs> just those two days, New Year's Day and New Year's Eve. I would really um, watch lobster, and the reason is, lobster is a bad idea because they believe that they they do. They move backwards, right. and therefore they could lead to setbacks. Okay. So that's what people I mean, believe. That makes sense. Chicken is also very discouraged right. because they scratch backwards, which could cause regret, regret or dwelling on the past. Okay. So another theory also warns against eating any winged fowl, so any bird with wings, because your good luck. <laughs> Show me a bird without <laughs> wings. <laughs> your good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> but your good luck could fly away, Bill. There are fish with wings, though. Okay. Just to, just to be. Uh, <laughs> To point that out, not not only I guess I guess you could say all birds have wings, right. but not all winged animals are, are birds. birds. Right, that makes sense. So, yeah, you don't want to eat any winged bird, any birds. Okay, that makes um, sense. So those are the what you really should avoid. So let's talk a little bit about what we're what we're making here. How much time do we have before we have to hit? Oh, our about first two break? minutes. Okay, uh, we'll talk about the first food group first. While our vegetables sweat here, just because it's the shortest grapes. Now that's not a real American. Food tradition because okay. I didn't really even know about the grapes until I started doing my research here. But it's a very it's it, it started in Spain, and the Spanish they consume twelve grapes at midnight, why? one for each stroke of the clock. Which you're going to tell me why? It dates back to 1909 when grape growers in uh, in Spain initiated the practice to take care of gra- they had a grape surplus. Oh. So the the idea then uh, it was it was well received and it then spread to Portugal as well as other. Sp- Spanish and Portuguese colonies such as Venezuela, Cuba, Mexico, Ecuador, and Peru. So each grape represents a different month of the year, the 12 as well. So, for instance, if the third grape that you eat is sour, yes. then they believe March will be not such a good month. Oh, interesting. So the sweeter the grape f- that, that corresponds to that month of the year, huh. the better they believe that month to be, the sweeter that to they believe that month to be. So the goal for them is to swallow all the grapes before the last stroke of midnight. But the Peruvians insist on eating a 13th grape just for good, good measure. Good luck. I mean, that makes so, a lot of sense. I mean, it, it, it probably doesn't really happen that way, but it's um, a, a, an interesting tradition. Yeah, so if you want to join that and start that tradition here how in about America. Instead of doing, how about instead of doing the grapes, do a 12 glasses of champagne before midnight? Because <laughs> there Because it is made of grapes. Yeah, and if you uh, read my column in uh, Go Magazine, my first starters column, yes. which ran yesterday – it was all about champagne. Oh, right, we did I saw the, that. the champagne cocktail, which is uh, became one of my favorites. Kind of hoping you were going to do the shrimp. <laughs> and the shrimp, the champagne poached shrimp. We can yeah. do that if you want in a little, so, little later I mean, weeks. Sounds sounds good to me. It looked good yesterday when I read it. It was. It was very good. So it was just shrimp poached in champagne. It was, you know, we made a, a, a broth out of the so champagne. So if you eat shrimp for New Year's then? Yeah. Because they go awesome. forward? Yeah, you can eat shrimp. You Shrimp's can't. okay. Shrimp cocktail is actually a huge New Year's right. dish. Can you do crab? But that goes sideways. Yeah. Okay. I guess crab, crab Just can't okay. do lobster. The lobster's the one that they forewarn against. Well, as we debate what you can eat on New Year's, we'll be back. Actually, you can eat whatever you want. <laughs> there but you go. <laughs> if you're very superstitious, though, you may want to be just be forewarned, and that's what we're here for. Yeah. So let's take our first break. Sounds good. We will be right back. Don't touch that radio dial with more Just Cook It Radio. When we come back, we're going to continue cooking our soup. Our vegetables are just about there. When we get back from the break, we'll add our sausage and our lentils and some other fun things. So, again, don't go anywhere because Just Cook It is served up to you today by the Big Barn Country Store and Deli by Pareka Chiropractic Center, Inc., by 4th Street Barbecue by the Herald Standard, and on FCTV by Phil Giannetti Motors. And you're watching Just Cook It on Fayette TV Channel 77 and also at JustCookIt.tv. And you're listening to Just Cook Cook It Radio, here on your local station, 590 Radio WMBS. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, give Phil Giannetti's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com.
Good to have you back. You're listening to Just Cook It Radio on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pereca here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley, and that was the quietest break we've yeah, ever had. I was just going to say, how many tweets did you do in the two minutes? <laughs> just one, but all okay. three of us were immediately <laughs> tweeting as soon as we went, on, on, went to commercial. Normally we have a conversation, we chit-chat. No, we were tweeting. We're tweeting. But that's good because now the, our conversation that we generally have in studio is now we can share it with everyone else. I don't know how interesting that's going to be, <laughs> but okay. Okay, so anyway, back to the interesting. What we're cooking in studio. <laughs> We've got our, our uh, carrots, onions, celery, garlic, bay leaf cooking in butter, and they're just about ready. And at this point, I have right here about three-quarters of a pound of hot Italian sausage. Ooh, that sounds good. So we're going to add that to the mix, and we're just going to brown it. Now, it's not going to brown like golden brown or like, you know... It's not going to get real caramelized, but we want to get it cooked to the point where it's crumbly, where okay. it's almost there. I mean, it's going to cook l in the broth as well, so it doesn't have to be completely cooked all the way through, but we want to give it a nice head start here, kind of render it down and get that flavor working in there with the vegetables. Gotcha. I mean, you can start so to smell it right now, and you can hear it You can hear it uh, sizzling. Now, how high does the heat have to be? I forgot to ask you that right earlier. Now, yeah, well, we started on about medium-low. I have okay. it on about medium right now. Okay. I turned it up just a hair just after I added the sausage because when you add your sausage, now, we had I had it sitting out. Now, whenever you use meats, it's a good idea to temper them, which means have them sit out at room temperature for right. a certain amount of time. This we had sitting out for about a half an hour, which you'll be fine. That's not that long enough for it. If you pull it right out of the fridge, that's not long enough for it to become dangerous. And the reason you do that is you let the, some of that chill kind of come off of right. it so that when you add it to the pan, it doesn't immediately cool your pan down. Oh, I got you. So that's why I turned it up to about medium. Even though we ha we let it temper, it's still colder than the vegetables. Right. Well, the vegetables so, have been heating for a while. Exactly. Bit, so. so I put it in there. I turn the heat up to medium. And once it starts to get going here, yeah. I'll turn it back down if need be. And if not, then we'll just leave it where it is and we'll just stir it and let the sausage kind of get some color and start to cook. Okay. I mean, because if, if you can see it right now and you'll be able to watch what he's doing on TV on uh, Tuesday night mm -hmm. and also at JustCookIt.tv. You can see in the um, pan. It smells really good. Let me get a couple pictures of that so we can uh, are you going to tweet them I, I can tweet them i can tweet them <laughs> i'll tweet as i go in over top there we go got that that's got a good that. shot there yeah, that's good i like that and so we're going to let this cook and i'm going to open up while this cooks a can of diced tomatoes it's a 14.5 ounce can of diced tomatoes and there and there's no because you can get diced tomatoes that are all different flavors, but this, these are just in their own juice. Are they so organic? We're use that. These ones are not. Oh. Don't tell my mother. I was Hopefully just going to say, we gotta, we got to... I'm sure I'll get flack from, for that later. <laughs> but, so we're going to open up this can of diced tomatoes. And you can use fresh tomatoes if you like. I just think it's a little more convenient to use the canned stuff. And the fact that it's going to cook because this is a soup, so it's going to simmer for a while. You're not even going to tell that it's diced or that it's canned. Okay. A lot of canned items they have that canned taste to them. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the the trick to getting rid of that to getting rid of that canned taste is to cook them and to cook them for a, a, a long period, period of time. time. So when you make tomato sauce and you make it from, you know, from a can, it's always a good idea. Whenever you do quick sauces, you know, the, the real quick fresh sauces, you always want to use fresh tomatoes. Right. Um, if you're going to make like a marinara that, that cooks for a long time or a ragu that's been cooked you mm. can, for a lo lengthy period of time, you can use canned tomatoes, okay. canned sauce. Um, and just because it's going to cook for so long, it'll get rid of that canned taste gotcha. and flavor. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So we got our sausage working here, and we have two different types of lentils that we're going to use for this. We have some green lentils and some red lentils. Where do lentils come from? Lentils are grown. They're they're a legume. They're uh, in the bean family. Okay. So they're grown. And I'll never forget when I was uh, when I was young. I've been to Italy twice. Both <coughs> times, both times when I was a young young child. Right. I was I believe I was eight and eleven when I went. Okay. Two times I went. But um, I'll never forget my grandfather's house. We stayed in my grandfather's house that he grew up in yes. as a kid. And it's a beautiful house, two stories out in the country, three-story house, all marble floors, but it's extremely, you can tell that it was built way back when because, right. I mean, it has electricity and all that stuff and the small TVs, but you can just tell that mm -hmm. it's an old-style home. But um, it beautiful, the, the, the backyard is a huge mountain. Oh, it's really? just yeah it's the one of the biggest the biggest mountain in that chain and um so if you go for trips we'll go up to up the mountain there's roads that go right. up the mountain there's little villages on the mountain 
Well, halfway, about halfway up the mountain, there's these huge expanding fields that you can look out over, and there's springs where you can get spring water, and these fields are all lentil fields. Oh, interesting. So they grow lentils there. So I'll never forget as a kid seeing these lentil fields and just being in awe because you can see how many there are. And it's like in the middle of nowhere on the side of a mountain, but people cultivate them there. Now, they just grow lentils in Italy, or they grow no, them no, no, all No, 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 they're the growing all over, the, okay. all over the place. There's a huge Saskatchewan in Canada. It's really? a huge lentil place. Um, and the U.S. is in the top ten. In, I in lentils, that. yeah, in France is huge with lentils, and even, there's tons of tons of places where they grow lentils. Um, the ones that we have here are green lentils, which you can get at the supermarket. Um, it, the, both of these you can get at the supermarket, and red lentils. Red lentils are a little more expensive than the green. Green are very are very economical. Right. The red lentils are a little more expensive, uh, but they have different different flavor profiles. The green lentils are a little more earthy. Right, I've um, had and green lentils before. Right, and they hold their shape a little better okay. um, as they cook. They take a little longer to cook, but they, they're still relatively about the same time cooking time as the, uh, as the red lentils. The red lentils are sweeter, and they will break down more as they cook, so they'll actually add a thickness to the soup. So they'll help thicken okay. it as, as it cooks. And um, what I love about lentils are they're so small. Okay, They're like dried beans. But when you have dried beans, you have to soak them um, overnight. I mean, you don't have to, but it help, really helps significantly cut down the cooking time. The lentils, you don't have to do that because they're so small. And the thing about lentils, when you look at them, and I'll show you these, Bill, you can see their shape. Yeah, I they're see convex. Them. They're like a lens, and that's where they look like a lens, and that's where the term yeah. lentil comes from. I got it. So, And the reason they're so popular for New Year's is a couple of reasons. Number one, they're round. So it, you know, have a your your year should be round and rounded off, and it just keeps going and good fortune. But they also look like coins. Ah. So when they cook, they expand, they expand. And so it's a sign of your money growing and wealth in the new year. So what did we get? We got a package, another package delivered to the studio. That was from Rose. It's from, it's Rose. from Rose. Our friend in Namakolin. Did she? Thank you, Rose. Says we we're like it. warts. <laughs> did she tell us what, what it is? What is this? It's uh, I can't remember exactly what it was. She said it. She, it's, it's um, it goes kind of goes along with Mario's heritage, as she was telling oh, me. Oh, is this, so. this the, what you guys were talking about last week on the show, or two yes, weeks ago? Let's see. Let's open her as up. As he opens it up, is Rose going to call in? Well, she might. She's probably driving back now. <laughs> okay. Interesting. It's a soup. Yeah. Um, I have some spoons. Let's try. It. I mean, it's cold. But it's cold. We can try. We'll try it. it. So, let's see. <laughs> you this tried first. <laughs> <laughs> she may be trying to knock us off. We yeah. don't know. <laughs> Rose, <laughs> how much do you like us? No, we appreciate it. This is no, great. That's funny. So, it looks like it's, it's got some sauerkraut in it. I can see that. And some mushrooms. I wonder if this is the mushroom soup. See, our mushroom soup that we make right. has sauerkraut in it, but it's brown. This is white. It's white. Ours is brown um, from the dried mushrooms and the fresh mushrooms, and it's really a dark brown mm -hmm. color, and it's got the sauerkraut in it. So, let's give it a give it a try. It's very good. It's probably even better hot, but you can taste the sauerkraut, the mushrooms. It's in a light white broth. Mm. That is hmm. good. Merry and Christmas. The, and the interesting, I've never had anything like that before. That's yeah, it's good. very good. Yeah, it's a, a flavor-wise, it's pretty similar to uh, to what we make, but mm -hmm. the the color's different. The, the color's different. different. Yes. It's, it but it's very really good. Thank good. you, Rose. We, we appreciate have, we that. We have Rose on hold. Oh, okay. great. Let's have. Let's talk to her. Hey, hey Rose. How are you? How are you? I hope you enjoy that. Um, it's, it's like I think I was telling you before, my grandfather would always say, it's the uh, same, same church but different pews. So everybody's suits were just a little tiny bit different. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, my, my uh, sister Karen graciously uh, donated a little bit of it so you guys could taste it. I hope that, that brought back some memories. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, and uh, it, it is a little bit tangy this year. Every year it's an adventure. It comes out a little different way every year. So, uh, what she usually does to counteract that is put a little bit of honey in. My grandmother okay. always put a little bit of honey in for sweetness for the coming year in every dish that she made. So, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I've been enjoying listening to you, and I will certainly try your New Year's stuff and avoid those lobsters. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It is very good, and yes. I've never had anything like that now, before. Are so. those little uh, little squares of pasta in it? Yes, that's uh, the... It's I don't know. They're a, they're called egg flakes. Okay, so they're egg, we've, smaller we've egg noodles. Used or, yeah, we've used orzo before. We've used uh, a chenny de pepe before. Well, any small pasta, and usually it's not mixed in with the soup. But um, that's the only way she could figure out for you to 
Uh, yeah, to get the, the true effect. So the excellent. soup is a little thicker than it usually is, but uh, but it tastes pretty much the same. And it's very good. Um, no, yeah, thank you. I it, hope you enjoy it. Absolutely. It tastes, it's very similar to what we have. Our soup, um, like with the sauerkraut, it has mushrooms in it, but it's in a very dark brown broth. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't, we don't put uh, the egg noodles in it, which I enjoyed that. That was a nice, mm-hmm. nice change. Something, something different, different, like you said, mm-hmm. same church, different pews. But um, yeah, it's very good, Rich. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Oh, you're it's most always welcome. It's always you're great to welcome. try new foods yes. and try different things from different heritage heritages, especially. Absolutely, so. and that was that's the whole idea. And I, as I said, you know, I've certainly tried some things that you guys have talked about that I never would have touched with a ten foot pole, so to speak. <laughs> and um, that, that's my goal for the new year: be more adventurous as far as cooking is concerned. Fantastic. Well, we'll try to help you out with that as much as we can. Gotcha. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Rose. Thank you. Happy Happy new year. You're welcome. Bye-bye. 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 Well, that was great. That was good, and it is good. It, it's different. It's Mike, you need good. to try this during break. All right, yeah. well. Um, it's very good. <laughs> I'll turn that down. I don't really turn much down. <laughs> Mike's, <laughs> Mike's ready. Mike doesn't do a lot of cooking at home, but we're trying to change that here. I, I just I learned so much watching you guys do it. It's like, I, I don't have much of an experience of it, but it's kind of neat to just watch the process every Saturday. So they didn't teach you how to do this at ASU, right? <laughs> you didn't have to take a culinary class? <laughs> I was learning other stuff today. <laughs> so Probably we can't talk about stuff we can't talk about comment, on the air. You made a comment. We were talking about high schools. And if you guys haven't figured out, I went to the same place that Mike went to, except 20 years before he did. And I mentioned my home ec teacher. You mentioned yours. Mm-hmm. And it, I got in my car and I'm going, that's Dan Webb's mom. Yeah. I know them. <laughs> I grew up with them. I, they look okay. right down the street from me. Oh, wow. But Emma Webb was a wonderful, wonderful person, mm-hmm. and she was your home ec teacher. Yep. I forgot all about that. So uh, when I post on Facebook this afternoon to him, I can let him know. But it's yeah, cool. uh, really nice. Know the whole family really well, too. So back to our soup. I don't want to I'm sorry. I'm doing – no, it's, okay. it's, it's New Year's. I'm, I'm, it's I'm, New I'm Year's. doing my, my yeah. reminiscing and everything else. And So I added our lentils to this pan now that our sausage is cooked. I'm just going to – Steer them through. Go stir ahead. Th- stir them. Okay, mm-hmm. and we're also going to add our can of tomatoes. Okay. Diced tomatoes. And I've got some Italian seasoning here. Okay, dried Italian seasoning that you can buy at the supermarket. We'll add that for flavor. And then I've got some vegetable stock, okay? So four cups or a quart. We're going to add all that. And the reason we're using vegetable stock, Bill, do you know why? Uh, to make it wet? Well, yes. But <laughs> <laughs> you ask, I gave you an answer. Why vegetable? Um, because you can't use chicken because it's the the uh, the superstition of Very that. Good, you Thank are you. paying attention. I told you, you passed. But you why didn't you use beef? Um, we could have used beef. I like uh, for lentils. I I like to. I want to be able to taste the lentil. I got you. And I feel like beef's a little assertive. Especially with the you don't throw me off while I'm tweeting here. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) the year of the Twitter. (laughs) So we added we added our stock, and now what we're going to do is we're going to bring this to a boil. Okay. Okay. Once this comes to a boil, we're going to turn it down to a simmer. We're going to let it simmer. It's going to take the lentils about a half an hour to cook. Wow. So we're going to turn it down to a simmer, let it simmer for half an hour, and then what I have here is our escarole. Okay, and escarole is a part is part of the endive family. Okay. okay, it's a it's a green. It's a little. Uh, it's it looks not like very a shredded tender. lettuce. Is what well, it looks I cut like. it like this. Okay, so it comes it's it comes in a head like a head okay. of lettuce, and you'll take the leaves and break them down, and then you cut them into about half inch strips. Okay, okay, just crosswise. Yeah, across the leaf, and then um, you hold on to these. Like this, after the lentils are tender, which I said will take about a half an hour, we're going to add our escarole in after that and right. let it simmer for an additional five minutes with the escarole okay. in it, and then it's done. Okay, and we're going to season it. This, it, it doesn't say to season it here in the recipe, but I like to season it at this point a little. And, of course, you're using sea so salt. A little sea salt, absolutely. You can hear it shaking yes, here. Yes, you it's can. It's in a shaker. Those aren't mar- maracas. It smells really good. And yeah. I'm going to add a little white pepper. Now, can I'm going to ask you a question because we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Why do you not grind your own white pepper? White pepper. I do have white pepper, f- um, the pepper corns, corns that you can grind, but I go through it so much okay. that it doesn't really, you know, I, this this container here won't sit on my shelf for two years and it's almost gone as it is. We've talked about it in the past right. about the pot- potency right. of pre-packaged stuff exactly. like that. And again, white pepper is 
very potent. Okay. It's way more potent than black pepper. So if you lose some of that potency from white pepper, it's not going to really um, affect it that, affect much. It that okay. much. I just wonder, because, again, we've talked about that in the past. Yeah. And well, whole white peppercorns I usually use in a, sh- in a sachet. So, which is like, if you take, t- that's I'm another sorry. cooking term, sachet. <laughs> I'm thinking you take of, never mind. Cheesecloth. Hey. <laughs> you take cheesecloth and you put fresh herbs, peppercorns, um, aromatic things like that. Okay. You tie it up. You drop oh, okay. it in your soup. I understand soup. what you're saying now. Then after it's done, instead of digging through to pull out, to, to get all those, even your bay leaf you put in there, yeah. you just pull the sachet out. Now, throw it do away. you use a cheesecloth or something to put yes. the sachet so in? Yes, yep. cheesecloth, butcher's twine, put it all in, tie it up into a little pouch. Yeah. It's called a sachet, and you can drop it in your broth. That. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's, and the white peppercorns, whole peppercorns are good for that, for soups. What other things soups? like that. I mean, I've seen lentil soups before. Mm-hmm. Are there anything else that you can lent, add lentils to, or can you add lentils to everything? Absolutely. Lentils are great. Um, lentils Lentils go great with salmon. I love okay. lentils with salmon. You can make lentil salads later, like, oh, really? cold, like cold bean salads. But do you have to cook the lentils to put yes. them in the salad? Yes. Okay. You can't, you can't eat, eat them hard as a rock. No, here. they're, okay. they're too hard. They're they're dry. They're too hard. Um, you can cook them like that. I love creamed lentils. So you cook I've them in cream. Um, you cook them in cream, and um, they're really rich and delicious. And again, you you can do them with like bacon, mirepoix, which is carrot, onion, celery. Um, things like that. So there's all kinds of different things you can do with lentils. You can mix a very popular lentil dish is lentils with rice. Yes, I've seen so, that. Yeah, so they'll make lentils and mix them okay. with rice. So very, it's it's a versatile um, ingredient product that you yeah, can use. Yeah, absolutely. It's very versatile, and uh, it's very really delicious actually. But I find that they're very underrated. You don't hear very many uh, things other no. than lentil soup. Right. And you don't really see it a lot. And My wife uses it when she makes. Um, she does a. She cooks a ham bone, and she okay, puts yeah, it in absolutely. her. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. In that, which is almost very like good. black eyed peas. Yeah, very similar right there. And the thing with lentils, I've eaten them grow, growing up, being Italian, and um, especially on New Year's. Every New Year's, like the, the big traditions around here, are the, is the pork and sauerkraut. Right. But we also have always had being Italian lentils because okay. lentils are a very Italian. Mm-hmm. Lentils and sausage are the are the is the Italian tradition. So they'll make lentils and they'll you know they'll do them with carrots onion celery um and they'll they'll cook them all together almost like a like beans right and then they'll put in um sausage and they'll eat lentils now, and sausage what is the nutritional value of a lentil lentils are very nutritious the protein they, they're they're very high in protein. protein they're the third highest um protein concentration legume out there what would be the so, first two um I'd have to do some research. But on it's that. number three. Lentils you know are number three, sure. and lentils also have uh, a lot of fiber, so they're okay. also high in fiber. And it's amazing that something that small, yeah, could have a lot of fiber in it. Yeah, absolutely, and they're they're very very good for you. I can actually give you some if you give me a minute to pull this up. I can give you details. Well, while you, you look that up, why don't we take our next break and then we can come back and try some popcorn and some uh, popcorn soup. and lentil soup. I think it's a Sounds great combination. Wonderful. Uh, so glad don't I brought my coffee. <laughs> Popcorn, coffee, and lentil soup. Hey, We're pushing the boundaries here. I think we are. So don't touch that radio dial. We'll be back with more Just Cook It. We're going to try our soup. We're going to try our popcorn. And um, we've got a lot going on here. Maybe we'll send out some tweets during the break. Hey, sounds good. <laughs> and Just Cook It is served up to you today by the Big Barn Country Store and Deli, by Pareka Chiropractic Center, Inc., by 4th Street Barbecue, and by the Herald Standard. And you're watching Just Cook It on Fayette TV Channel 77 and also at JustCookIt.tv. And you're listening to Just Cook It Radio here on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS. Phil Giannetti Motors at 656 National Pike East in Brownsville is a proud sponsor of programming on FCTV. Phil Giannetti Motors is providing quality vehicles for 45 years. If you're looking for a quality pre-owned vehicle, Give Phil Giannetti's a call at 724-785-6800 or stop by their website, philgiannettimotors.com. Welcome back. You are listening to Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS, and also on FCTV Channel 77, and at JustCookIt.tv. I am Mario Pareka here with Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley. 
And ta-da, our soup is finished. <laughs> I, I think, uh, <laughs> let, let me get a picture of that so I can tweet it. One thing that uh, we wanted to share with everybody, because we know not everybody is uh, computer and Internet savvy, is that you, if you have a computer, you can sign up for a Twitter account by going to twitter.com and then able to follow us. What's really interesting, and again, I don't know if we, uh, <laughs> we thought about this or not, but we can actually tweet pictures of what's going on in studio while we talk about them. Yes. And post them immediately to the Twitter page. That way you guys can see what we're talking about and what is going on as I take a picture of the soup. Yeah, it's all about being more... Interactive. Interactive, exactly. And getting, uh, trying to be more interactive with the listening audience. So that's that's our goals for 2014. And we're going to, like I said, it's the year of the Twitter. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. I really do. Because it gives us the opportunity to share more with the listening audience. And that way you don't have to wait for the program to get on the internet or air it on right. TV because we're uh, sending the pictures of what the what the product looks like. And if you go to uh, twitter.com and follow at Just Cook It Radio, yes. you'll be able to see everything we do in the studio. Yeah, that's the show page. Yeah, so it, it gives you an idea of what's happening. That looks wonderful. It does. So we're gonna, I'm going to bowl some of this what, up. What beer would you recommend drinking with this? Since <laughs> I'm always Shiner. curious. Oh, <laughs> It's funny because our our one friend, he was on the podcast when we first started. You remember Ryan? Right. Oh, remember? Yes. He's a beer guy. Yeah. That's uh, that's his thing, and he was a manager of a, a bar, a local bar, a while back, and they did food as well. So he would try to pair the beer with the food on the menu, and we used to get on him because almost every beer selection for every yeah. dish was Dale's Pale Ale. Oh, really? So we'd always get on him and say, oh, "I'm having peanut butter and jelly today." I'm going to pair with Dale's Pale Ale, and he'd get all upset. <laughs> but he'd say, it goes with everything. So it's just funny if he's listening. So I'm going to bowl some of this up. We have our festive holiday bowls. Yes, it looks very nice. Okay. Don't throw these away, by the way. These aren't disposable. These are your mother's? Yeah. You, you, you think I'd buy bowls like this? <laughs> <laughs> you stole Mother China cabinet before you left this morning, well, or what? Well, I said that we used them on Christmas, so I figured. Oh, they were clean. Know, they were there. <laughs> so the way I like to finish this, bowl it up. And then I'm going to give it a drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Kind of worried me okay. there for a minute. I thought it was a glue bottle when you picked <laughs> it up. No. <laughs> <laughs> a little sprinkling of sea salt. Sea salt. Okay. And that's all she wrote. So I'm going to give you this, Bill. You have your spoon there? I have my spoon. And I'm also going to give you to enjoy with that. I have some bread here. This is a... Now, you can pair whatever bread you want. You can even make croutons with the soup. It goes great. But this is a... Rosemary potato bread, mm. which would go really good with that. There's some oh, that is amazing. It. Thank you. That is really it's good. It's super simple. I mean, it's just getting those flavors together, and it's all good luck because you have your – the green. That by the way, excellent. greens symbolize money mm -hmm. because they they resemble money. Save some for money. Von Benko. He'll want okay. this. They, they resemble the money. Today, he right? is, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> um, really pork, since pigs – since pigs – Dig in the dirt. Right. They rec they um it, it symbolizes moving forward. Mm -hmm. So you have your money, your fortune in your lentils and in your greens, and you have your progress in moving forward gotcha. in your pork. So it covers all your bases. That is really good, Mario. Thank you. Um, that is something that um, not just eating for New Year's. You could eat this any time. Oh, absolutely. And this that is, is a great. A, that is one of those good hearty winter soups. Yeah. That whenever it's a very cold and snowy day, not that we've seen many of them yet. But um, it is it's excellent. Here's a spoon for you, Mike. Yes. And the other thing, before we wrap up today, we got to try this wonderful popcorn that was oh, sent yeah. to us um, from our friends in Swickley that, that got it from uh, Popcorn and That. Popcorn and, and that. that. And and That. And That. And do they have a website that you can throw um, out for them? Let me since see. What is the website? Do, 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 do. I don't see. Oh, yes. It's Popcorn dash n dash that dot com or you can call them at one eight six six five zero six eight zero one zero and that's the toll free number what do you think mike mm. he's speechless really yeah. really good isn't that good <laughs> that's Beam. different bread oh thank you no, no this is really good yeah, i can't, that, I can't that say is. enough that is so as uh, everybody's eating soup we got to try this before we leave today is the uh, container of popcorn as i take off the uh that do you want to try the car that's in a very nice package too we'll hold show that to the camera really wow, quickly does that smell good there's three different types here yeah there is a white cheddar 
There is a caramel milk or caramel milk chocolate coconut almond, and then there's the traditional caramel and peanuts. Did you say white cheddar? Yes, white cheddar. Oh, I love white cheddar. Do you really? Yes, I do. And I love uh, caramel corn. And I need to take a picture for Twitter. <laughs> and the website. <laughs> yes. Well, there is a picture on the website that I took as, yesterday. As Mike and I are do- devouring into it, Mario put his bowl, put his bread on top, and make it look all pretty. Oh, what do you, I'm, not, I'm no amateur. What do you think this is? <laughs> well, I'm going for the popcorn right now. Go for it. I'll be. I'm right behind you. Oh, that's really good. Have you had this before? No. I used to do Cub Scout popcorn back mm-hmm. in the day, mm-hmm. way back in the day, but not recently. Talk about a job. We come in on Saturday mornings. We eat like kings. <laughs> and then I starve the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's not true, but still. Your wife would have something to say about that, I would think. So, like I said, you're probably going to hear that later. <laughs> Picture. Okay, so if you're following us on that Twitter, good. Really good. Yeah. what do we got? Which ones did you open? I opened all three. Perfect. We got to share it all. So, Mike, give us a uh, give us a quick rundown on the popcorn. It's all really good. It, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you have to say. <laughs> Marty and Donna, thank you little? very, very much. I did mean, you take a picture actually, of the popcorn? No, I didn't. I was too busy. You better get a shot. I'll get a shot of the popcorn. <laughs> I got to get away from Mike first. The caramel corn's really good. It is good. It's it's uh, it is a very good popcorn. You could you could get addicted to that really quickly. <laughs> Definitely, that's that's one of those things that can be very dangerous. <laughs> it looks great, and I I love the way it's packaged. And this is the first time. Right. I'll let you take the picture of that so that I can dive in as well. Yeah, I'm gonna eat some soup now while you. Uh, <laughs> Soup and popcorn, I love it. It's a different combination. That's very good. I need to start calling in the sub to do the 10 o'clock news because this is just getting <laughs> too much now. It just sits there and teases you? <laughs> it does. So, again, we didn't even throw out the phone numbers today. No. We have wow. about two minutes if anyone wants to call in and just say hi and give us some commentary. 438 Talk about your New Year's resolutions. Yeah, 724-438-4593. And if you want to call in, what we're going to start doing, for the starting for the rest of 2014. we got to do something. We forgot to do a giveaway last week. We do have a giveaway. Yeah. Well, well, we'll tweet it. How about that? No, we got to tell okay. everybody. we got to tell everybody. Let me um, pull, it, pull it up so we can <laughs> pick a winner. But um, what we'll do is, when you call from now on, when you call in the show, mm-hmm. um, here we go. Pulling up the names of the people who. What's really sad is this is what happened last week. <laughs> we had too much of a show going on, plus the giveaways from the big barn. And yeah, G- we had too many giveaways last week. That's G- why we Gina pushed Boots. it. We, we okay, forgot here's about our, it. Here's Monday, our contestants. Um, so from now on, when you call in, the first thing we want you to do, if you have one, is throw out your Twitter handle. Sure. Throw it out. We'll follow you, yeah. and you can follow us. So call in. We'll say hi. How you doing? Just throw out at whatever, Sounds and then good. we can get going with the call. So keep that for future reference. So Bill. Here are our contestants. I'll let you pick one. Oh, I get to pick one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so he's looking. I'm looking, I'm looking. Randomly select one. We, we do have a caller, but we have a minute left. I don't know if we have time or not. Um, Our, our winner? Yes. Is Brandy Bolin. Oh, Brandy. From Great. New Geneva, Pennsylvania. Okay. And we were in so New that's Geneva. The just, that's the Just Cook It prize pack and prize pack congratulations so we'll sending that to, your way brandy you, brandy we appreciate it thank you for for joining we have a caller but 30 seconds left who's the caller we say hi to him let's, no. let's. go ahead all right okay. hi caller hi caller hi guys uh it was really glad uh, we were really glad meeting you last week thank and, you for coming uh, yeah you're welcome and we enjoyed your ham <laughs> <laughs> well, oh perfect good. thank you so much okay talk to you later thank Bye-bye. you very thank much thank you for calling bye-bye so that's all the time we have, unfortunately, but um, we're going to sit here and eat some more popcorn and some soup. soup. So make sure you check us out online at justcookit.net. And, uh, gentlemen, anything, any parting words in five seconds? Happy New Year's. Happy yes, New Year. Yes, have a very let's happy eat. New Year. Go to justcookit.net. <laughs> Go to justcookit.net, get the recipes. You won't be disappointed. And we'll talk to you for Bill Alexander and Mike Sackley. I'm Mario Pareca. We'll talk to you next year right here on oh. Just Cook It on your local station, 590 Radio, WMBS. 
Thanks for listening to Just Cook It Radio with Mario Pereca and Bill Alexander. For more information on today's program, visit the Just Cook It website at justcookit.net. Here, you can listen to the podcast or watch Mario and Bill cook today's recipe on Just Cook It TV. If you have any questions or comments about the show, please call 855-590-0590. 